Well, it's certainly been turbulent skies over the British Isles over the past 24 to 36 hours. We've seen uh, at least three tornadoes touch down across England. Yesterday, I've seen also a report that uh, South Wales had a tornado. Uh, and we even seen some damage in the, in the town of Rugby in Warwickshire, as well as that down in Essex as well from a, a separate uh, tornado uh, touchdown as well. So, you know, not uh, entirely uncommon uh, for the British Isles to see Tornadoes that certainly come uh, in in a much weaker form than the 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 their US uh, cousins, and uh, but it certainly does uh, cause a ruckus. That's for sure when we see them. The reason why we have seen that well, probably a a, a couple of uh, you know key uh, ingredients took place. We had a vigorous area of low pressure aloft, and of course we're seeing that uh, rapid upward motion as well as that, folks. The rotation in the atmosphere created by that uh, area of low pressure probably created the spin so we had the rapid upward motion this time of year we've got stronger sunlight that enhances the energy in the atmosphere so that it increases the upward motion uh, you know when you increase the upward motion you then uh, you know force out thunderstorms that develop heavy torrential downpours hail thunder lightning and as well as that gusty winds now uh, when you've got some conflicting winds with height that's called directional wind shear then you've got those those cells start to rotate as they start to rotate they then can spin up the odd little tornado and that was the case uh, yesterday causing some damage in the uh, in the town of rugby but that area of low pressure now becoming elongated as you can see here this is off the the gfs surface chart using the medial group website what you're going to see is here is basically the, the the eventual northeastward track of this system but the 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 unsettled weather, folks, is here to stay. I have no good news for you. No relief from this type of pattern that we're seeing and we have seen for the past several weeks. It seems to be that basically since that drought ban, uh, the, the hose pipe ban has, has kicked in, we've seen nothing but rainfall. So um, perhaps if the... If I had a call this uh, hose pipe ban earlier, we would have seen uh, 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 the heavier rains earlier. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be seeing a, a, an interesting scenario taking place over the upcoming weekend that we need to start monitoring uh, because we've got a, a situation involving here where we've got intensifying high pressure in the east, central and eastern parts of Europe. That's going to produce record-breaking temperatures in the next 24 the, uh, the 72 hours in fact while we've got a deep area of troughiness that's over the western part of Europe and the eastern part of the Atlantic. Now the orientation of this trough is basically northeast to southwest. That's going to dig very unsettled conditions all the way down into the Azores, into the Canary Islands and as well as that folks we're going to see a, a fight zone in the atmosphere take place between the cooler air to the west very warm moist air coming out of the south and that will set up not only big rains uh, across uh, the western part of the mainland Europe and uh, even parts of the UK. As well as that, folks, we're going to see the development of an area of low pressure. We've got a strong jet stream here that's racing out of the southwest, clipping the uh, basically uh, across and over the, uh, the English Channel at the moment. And that is harnessing the development of low pressure. Now, if I skip right through the 66 hours, you can see what I'm talking about. The GFS has a surface low pressure developing off the French coast. Now, there's a couple of models conflicting here. This system and this model is pointing this system to go westwards, missing the south coast of England. Now, I believe the UK Met model and other models depict this system pushing further north before taking a northwesterly track. Now, you notice here the tightly packed isobars. This here would be probably a system that would be a comparable in strength to the one that we've just seen. What is noteworthy is the fact that it looks like a smaller system, tightly packed and even though uh, we could see pressure of a similar value if you've got a more tightly packed system a smaller system if you're underneath that area of low pressure you can find yourself uh, receiving gustier stronger winds now you can see here by 72 hours notice the track here What's the model doing? It's taking it westwards or certainly even stalling it but intensifying it at the same time. What we need to watch for is that this system doesn't intensify but track further north and 
basically towards the south coast of England. Now this would actually be at least the third, if not the fourth, low pressure that's hit the UK out of the southwest. It's just simply the orientation, the pattern, the setup in the pattern that's keeping these systems and pushing them into the southern half of the UK as opposed to your more uh, your more typical north or westerly track that we would see uh, at any time of the year. But what it's worth noting here is this could produce not only strong to severe gale force winds but yet more torrential heavy rain and it would actually spread that rain up through the British Isles and Ireland over the course of the latter part of this weekend. Now this, this, this scenario, if it was to take place, would be during the latter part of the weekend. So you're talking Sunday night into Monday would be the time where you'd be watching out for strong to even severe gale force winds along the south coast. Gale force winds up through even perhaps as far north as Birmingham. It's so early to say at the moment because uh, we're we're only a Thursday. This is looking at, ahead at the end of the weekend, you know. So just keep checking back, and we'll figure out what this uh, scenario is going to take place. In the meantime, we're going to be seeing that area of region taking place, building that heat up into the northern, the the central and eastern parts of Europe. Now, if I skip right through Thursday into Sunday. You notice what's taking place here. Look at the explosive ridge of high pressure. Look at the colours. There are oranges starting to show up in parts of Germany, in the Poland. Look for temperatures, folks, in Munich, Berlin, uh, Prague. Temperatures are going to be pushing 30 Celsius by the weekend. That is incredible amounts of heat. Even over towards Warsaw and Moscow, it wouldn't surprise me if the temperatures were up around 27 Celsius. That has got to be uh, some uh, all-time April records, I would imagine, for this part of the world at this time of year. I'm not so sure exactly what the records are as such. Notice by Monday here, that area of low pressure in the upper levels is over basically the Midlands of England. So we're going to continue to see this unsettled pattern, folks. There is no change that I can see in at least the next seven days. The ridge of high pressure, that warmth remaining over central and eastern parts of Europe. When you continue to have that uh, trough over Western Europe, you're guaranteed to have, with this amplified pattern, amplification means you've got a wavy up and down jet stream. That means you've got uh, surges of cooler southwards and warm surges northwards. And that's the set setup. And we've got that trough in the west, ridge in the east. You can guarantee there's going to be plenty of warmth in the east and cool, unsettled weather in the west. Keep checking back. There's a lot of weather to look at over the next 72 hours. I'm going to try and keep you right up to date with the very latest. Have a good day, folks. Bye-bye.